Heroes. Mondays this fall on NBC. Richmond's number one choice for news at 11. This is NBC 12 News. A wave of violence hits Richmond this weekend. Three people killed in just 24 hours. Right now, police are looking for the people who are responsible. Welcome to 12 News at 11, everyone. I'm Sean Lewis. Two of the victims were fatally shot. The third was beaten to death in the fan. All three murders happened in different locations throughout our city. New at 11, Tara Morgan has more in this crime alert. Tara? Sean, revenge may be the motive for one of the shootings. The other was the result of a robbery in a Southside community already living in fear. Overwhelmed by emotional pain. He's uh, out of control right now. A man slowly walks past dozens of onlookers to a waiting ambulance. His brother, only moments before, placed in the back of a hearse. No, you don't see nothing. But police say several people did witness the shooting of 27-year-old Marlon Noel Diaz. He was gunned down in broad daylight during a robbery at an apartment complex on Clarkson Road near Walmsley. The 51st murder this year in Richmond, and only one of three in a weekend crime spree. Nearly eight hours earlier, police were investigating another deadly shooting but in the city's east end. Police say the shooting death here on Coulter Street may have been a retaliation killing for the beating death of Travis Johnson in the fan some 24 hours earlier. The suspect in this case is still on the run. Police say they were trying to track down 23-year-old Gary Halbert when they found his body riddled with bullets. Johnson's body was discovered at the intersection of Shields Avenue and Cary Street early Saturday morning. Police believe his death stemmed from a fight that started inside a nearby bar. Meantime, on Clarkson Road, the robber wanted in Diaz's murder is still on the streets. Romero Sanchez says the people who live here are both maddened and frightened. Yes, he, all the people, they are really scared, and on the same time, they are mad for these things. In the Diaz murder case, police are asking that people call the Latino tip line at 646-6475. You don't have to leave your name. You can also call Crime Stoppers at 780-1000. I'm Tara Morgan, NBC 12. There's new information tonight in the search for a man who fell off a boat and into the Appomattox River overnight. Dive teams pulled a body from the river this afternoon. They believe it may be the man they've been looking for. Beth Danzinger has the latest. Sean, we may not know until tomorrow if this is, in fact, 37-year-old David Ronish from Germantown, Maryland. But the Gabe Morden says rescue crews found the body in the same general area where Ronish fell in. <laughs> With a party in the background, rescue crews searched the Appomattox River until after midnight last night. And what was going on in the water affected everyone around. We were uh, having his birthday party, had a band set up, and uh, then I saw the boats going that way and circling and searching, and then we knew something had happened. Been several people upset and uh, started crying. And as rescue crews went back this morning, the pain of what happened hit Reed all over again. Because they come through here all the time. And, you know, it's hundreds of boats come through here daily and nothing happens. The game warden says around 7 yesterday evening, the boat Ronish was on was speeding through the water when he fell in. Ronish wasn't wearing a life jacket, and since the driver didn't see him go in, they weren't sure of the exact spot, only knowing it was past the 295 bridge. It's hard to search this kind of, kind of water. It's dark. There's no visibility. And, uh, you know, there's no real good landmarks out there. Chesterfield Hopewell and Game and Inland Fisheries were searching the surface of the water and using dive teams. And around 4, they say the hours of searching paid off. They recovered a body that they believe is David Ronish. Now, this is one of the unpleasant uh, realities of this job is we have to go out here and, and do this kind of work. And, uh... The body recovered was taken to the medical examiner's office here in Richmond. As we said before, we may not know the identity until tomorrow. The game warden says David Ronish was in town boating with friends. I'm Beth Danziger for NBC 12. Also in the Appomattox, a 21-year-old man was hit in the head by a jet ski this afternoon. That happened at the mouth of the Appomattox River where it meets up with the James. Hopewell's River Rescue Team says the young man and a friend were on jet skis jumping wakes when the man was hit in the head. He was airlifted to VCU Medical Center with some serious injuries, but rescuers say he was conscious. Hopewell police are investigating a shootout outside of a nightclub last night. It happened at the End Zone Sports Bar and Grill off Oakland. 
Around 2 this morning, neighbors say they heard a fight break out and then gunfire. One person was injured in the shooting and taken to the hospital. His condition is not known. One neighbor who did not want to be identified said that the experience was very frightening. It's a pretty scary experience. It really is. I mean, I've got kids and so, you know, first thing to do is run around the house, make sure everybody's okay. And, and I just went from there. If you have any information that could help in the investigation, call Hopewell Crime Solvers at 541-2202. Chesterfield police are searching for the person responsible for an armed robbery this morning. That happened around 11 o'clock at the Bradley Bridge Market on Bradley Bridge Road. Police say the man pulled out a gun and demanded money, and then he ran off. If you have information, please call Chesterfield Police. Also in Chesterfield, police believe they've nabbed the man suspected of exposing himself in a popular shopping complex. Police say they arrested the man on Friday night, who they believe exposed himself several times to customers in the Commonwealth Center Shopping Center. In June, two women reported a man performing a lewd act in front of the Jersey Mike's restaurant, and there have been other reports of a flasher at the Barnes & Noble bookstore there as well. An Amber Alert sparks a massive search tonight for two children abducted from Madison County near Charlottesville. Sheriff's deputies believe the two children are in extreme danger. 11-month-old Amaya Marie Jasper was last seen wearing a pink infant jumpsuit with yellow picture on the front. And 2-year-old Dion Amante Jasper was wearing a black, red, and white jersey with shorts and sandals. Police say this woman, 40-year-old Stacy Smith, abducted the children and could be headed to Washington or to Maryland. The group may be traveling in a 2005 gray Dodge Neon with the Virginia tag KAW8419. If you have information, contact the Madison County Sheriff's Office at 540-918-5161 or the Virginia State Police at this toll-free number 800-822-4453. Investigators in Roanoke say a natural gas water heater may be to blame for Friday's carbon monoxide poisoning at Roanoke College. One man was found dead inside of a dorm room. 113 other people were sent to the hospital. One elderly woman is still there but is in stable condition tonight. The family of a toddler bitten by a basset hound will find out tomorrow if that dog has rabies. Two-year-old Devon Sims was bitten last Saturday at the neighbor's house in Caroline County. Devon had reconstructive surgery on his left cheek and may still have gland and saliva damage. The Basset Hound is in quarantine and being watched for signs of rabies. Animal control officers say so far, though, he has not shown any signs of it. A warning from veterinarians tonight not to take your pets out in this heat. In just the last week, at least two dogs in Richmond have died from heat stroke and 20 others were treated for it. Dr. Tim Dietrich says any temperature over 85 poses a big risk to animals, and when it's as hot as it is now, it can be deadly very quickly. Especially dogs with short paces like boxers, uh, bulldogs, they cannot handle the heat at all. If they're out in the heat and they notice their dogs start to stumble, get weak, that's it. That dog is having problems, needs to be seen right away. Get them out of the heat. You can certainly hose them down. Don't give them water to drink because oftentimes they'll vomit that up. He says if your dog gets overheated, use ice cubes, not water, to cool your pet down. New at 11, a glimpse inside of the Churchill's train tunnel will have to wait. Crews say there is still too much water inside that area where the train has been buried for the last 80 years. They now hope to get a camera into the area on Tuesday. The tunnel collapsed, trapping the locomotive and four workers inside. Also new at 11, more than 20,000 auto workers could be out of a job by the end of next year. Next on 12, what the company says about the layoffs. The heat is on. It was a hot one today, and temperatures are going to climb even further over the next several days. I'll have all the details on the hot forecast coming up. But first, the conflict in the Middle East gets worse as Israel steps up attacks and both sides make chilling threats. That's next.